Ah. Okay. Who wants to try it? Please, can you please pass the bread? Absolutely, Mark. See, this is not. It's so hard. It's not. I mean, it's not what you think. No. <laughs> No, it's, but it, it, how many of you like that? That you can take this phrase that you learned and you can do it in many different ways, like at a coffee shop or when you're out and you're having your chicken or your beef because you're not going to have what? Oinky. <laughs> what is against the law in Jerusalem? Oinky. Swine. Shellfish. No pig shall set foot. <laughs> no BLT. Now, um, I have had turkey BLT, and I like that, but they don't have that even over there. And if you see a meat, you say, that looks like ham. Trust me, it is not ham. Okay, but. I have a question. Yes. No, you would just use the word pepper, or you could use and the ba, the ba. You could use ba. You wouldn't put the you wouldn't put the ha in there. Otherwise, they would have another marker. Yeah, you could have, see, this is the thing, it gets a little confusing, but just take your time, think about it, and practice with each other, and uh, it, it, it is fun. So now, we're going to move along, okay, is we, okay, we didn't move that? Are we okay with this? Great. Now, I'm going to move along here. Um, yeah. This is the word Mizrach. Mizrach. We sing it every week. Mizrach. Mizrach. <laughs> but Mizrach means the east the east and so little children do artwork like this this is not a little children this is the 72 year old man that drew this but I like Sharpie I do like Sharpie and this is done freehand with a Sharpie except for the straight lines <laughs> which is a good use for a ruler, you know. Uh, but anyway, it's not exactly the Magandavi. It's a little artistic. And I have East, East, Mizrach. But what children do, children in the home, they make a Mizrach, and then they color it, and they put it on that wall. Yeah, they mark the wall in their home. In their home. This is in Jewish homes. Now, not all Jewish people did that. So if you ask some of them, they'll say, well, we didn't know that in our house. Well, maybe not. But in some, they do. And I've been in a lot of Orthodox homes, and you look around for that, and you'll see the, the colored. Some of them are not that great artistically. But you don't say nothing because this is their child. What is the best way to start World War III? <laughs> Do not go down that road, my friend. Now, we're going to take a look at this page. Everybody should have the Aleph Beth. The Aleph Beth. The Aleph Beth. Now, then, uh, you know, it's in your Aleph Beth book. And it should be right there at the front, you know, Aleph Beth. 
If you don't have an, if you don't have any of this runoff, uh, just look on with somebody else. Uh, you've got a sister right there beside you. She can't find it because she doesn't have it. Uh, you didn't run the stuff. Did you get the stick? Did you get the? Uh, I oh, don't yeah, have my computer with me. You don't? Well, okay, okay. Uh, okay. So, anyway, um, anyway, uh, th that those were the things. I mean, I sent that out to everybody. And uh, I, I'm not, I'm going to, you know who I'm going to blame? I'm not going to blame you uh, for that because it's not your fault. But I've known Don for everybody, and he's got big shoulders, and he used to sell suits. And so... <laughs> Don, why didn't you get her the Olive Bet Sheet? <laughs> okay, this is the Olive Bet Sheet. Let's go ahead and do the Olive Bet song, right? Why? Because it's important to know how to say the letters. And I have had people come up to me and say, I thought you said there were 22 main letters in the Olive Bet. How come there's, what is this bet and vet? Well, the one has the dagesh. Dagesh, the word emphasis. It, em, you know, the, it has the dot in the middle of it, the bet. Now, remember I told you a little child was, I was teaching Hebrew little children, and, and the little child in the class, this is the Paul, this is one of Paul and Karen's things. And they shared this with me. And the little child said, okay, if you take the dogesh, the dog dish, they said dog dish. If you take the dog dish out of the bet, the dog went to the vet. <laughs> However they learn, you know, eventually they'll correct themselves on this and say dogesh. But uh, dogesh, not dog dish. Um, but there's a... Uh, that is the same letter, but you know what happens? In the Strong's Concordance, it uses the same letter for everything. There is no vet in the Strong's Concordance. How about that? Is that a Christian book or what? <laughs> Nothing wrong with Christian. How many of you know I love Christian? And how do you say Christian in Hebrew? No three. Oh. No three. The Nazarene. No three. That's why we're in this church. <laughs> no three. This is the No three church. Well, you know, and that's how you say that. Well, there was a rabbi, and this rabbi was part of a really big group, and he would go around saying, you know. Those Christians, they say, here is this uh, prophecy, and he shall be called the Nazarene. And there is nowhere in the word of God where there is a prophecy that says that. You know that that group let that rabbi go because that is an absolute fib. And the fact is that rabbi knew exactly where those two prophecies are in Jeremiah. But he would say that, why? Because he felt that he had a legitimate reason to say it because Christians are ignorant. Nice. Yeah. And because they're ignorant, he could say that and they would go, uh, well then where did he get that? Where did, how did, well, evidently you needed a prophecy, so you just put it in there. But that group, the big group, they did get rid of him. Now, he formed his own group later, and I'm not going to go into all the names and details, but I talked about this down at the rabbis' conference to some uh, Messianic rabbis, and they knew all about it because they grew up with him, and they were next-door neighbors to him, and their family was rabbis, and he's, you know, her family was rabbis. But there are people out there that feel if you're ignorant, then they can say anything to you, and you're gonna believe them. I had a pastor come up to me one time, and he said, Roger, is this true? 
And I said, you know, because you asked me that question, you need to take our class. And, and, and Nate would say the same thing because that there's no, there's no reason that they need to be ignorant of those things. It's just that that's the way it ended up. Uh, we, were in, we were encouraged to take Greek. We were encouraged to learn Greek for the New Testament in that. How many of you know at my house, I have a Hebrew New Testament. I don't read out of the Greek, you know, I do, because I can read it, but I do, but I, I prefer reading the scriptures out of the Hebrew uh, Bible, out of the Hebrew New Testament. How many of you went out and got one of those? Well, yeah, Sam, I expect you to have that. You, you know, you have one. Uh, some of you have them. They are wonderful and they're free. Yeah, you can get them for free. Yeah. Yeah, if you just look like this. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, Sam. <laughs> I didn't get mine for free. <laughs> you didn't get yours for free, man. No, they don't give them away. But the fact is, is that you can, you can, uh, you, you know, there's a big difference. And it is fun to read the uh, Hebrew text. And uh, uh, Rabbi has one. Uh, you know, I have one, you have one, you have one. You, you know, all you have to do, with, if you ever want to know how I can get my hands on a this kind of book or that, just ask Rabbi. Ask your Rabbi. And he will be glad to tell you. You know very definitely, don't you, that Rabbi Nate could step in here, take over this class, and it would be just fine. It would be just the way it is. Uh -huh. uh, he, uh, he's his very well versed and all of that stuff and and my gosh he's been to, Hebrew, uh, to Israel more times than I have uh, but let's do the Olive Bet song and uh, Olive Bet Bet Olive Bet Bet Gimel Dalit Hey Gimel Dalit Hey Bob Zion Het Het Bob Zion Het Het Yud Chof Chof Yud Chof Chof Lamed Memnon Lamed Memnon Samikai and Pei Pei Samikai and Pei Pei Sari Ku Fresh Sari Ku Fresh Shin Shin Ta Da 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 You want to do it again? Sure, one more time. Aleph bet bet, Aleph bet bet, Gimel dalit hey, Gimel dalit hey, Bab zayin het het, Bab zayin het het, Yud kaf kaf, Yud kaf kaf, Lamed mem nun, Lamed mem nun, Samikai and pei pei, Samikai and pei pei. Sari ku fresh, Sari ku fresh, Shin, Shin, Ta. Yeah, it's very nice, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You have the little song, and it's very good, and you sing the song. And we're just doing a little review before we go on tonight. This sheet right here, which you have to have... Because even on the course, you know, that you, you know, they didn't have all of, they didn't have them oh, yeah. all. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They left a few out. Which she, oh, it was just. Cup? And you know what? That's okay. Because I know, so I know some textbooks that do the same thing. Oh, yeah. It was just, it was just a It's an observing. overview. Yeah. And, and like I said, I've, I've had people and they would learn beginning Hebrew from me. And that was all they wanted. They didn't want to go any further. And, uh, and, and so that, that was fine with me. Uh, but if you want to go way down the road, if you want to eat where I eat, <laughs> then, you know, this is the thing. And, and our rabbi preached the message on the difference between milk and meat. Uh -huh. Yeshua taught a lot about the sefarot in the Berit HaKadoshah. 
And then later he says, I have meat that you know not of. He was talking to them about some things, and boy, some believers would go, that's deep stuff, that's meat. No, it's not. Mm -hmm. It's not meat until what happens? Till the light goes on. Oh, yeah. And you go, oh my. So that's what that's all about. Wow. That meat is between you and God. Who? It says that pastors can feed you with knowledge and understanding. I think to a, to a certain extent, understanding. Some more than others. But a lot of times all you're getting is knowledge. But who is the only one that can give you chokhmah, the Holy Spirit. wisdom? The Holy Spirit. God Almighty. Oh. And I will tell you the difference is day and night. You can have the knowledge of something. You can have some understanding of it. But until you get the wisdom on it. Chokhmah, Bina, and God. Yeah. Which the acronym is Chabad. Chabad. Mm -hmm. Chabad is made up of the three words. Chabad. How many of you knew that already? You just man, that was don't, don't share that kind of stuff. We all know that. Okay. Anyway, here we are. Here are the the uh, the vowels or the nikud. The nikud. Now. The first one, it looks like a little bitty T. Mm. But it's the Kamat. The Kamat. Now, you have to have it in your stuff, because we went through this the very first night of class, and we've gone through it many times. But the, the Kamat is an A. Ah. And then we have the Patak, and the Patak is an A. Ah. Well, why do we have two of them? Why do we have two of these? Well, do you know that if you have a kamatz and a kamatz, one of them will have an O sound, and the other will have an A sound. I mean, there, that, that kind of thing happens, and I mean, that's a little advanced, and I, I don't want to scare you. But how many of you have said things like, Mishpocha? How many of you know there's no O in there? Yeah, it, but it, it does have the the kamat. Yeah, but it sounds like an O, doesn't it? Yeah, mishpocha. And we are mishpocha, if you please. No, that's Siamese. Uh, anyway, so <laughs> anyway, we have the uh, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> zare, the zare, and you notice that. Um, I put on there, it's a long A, as in hey, only if it's followed by a yud. Otherwise, it's an E sound, or a, like the E in let. Eh, eh, eh. Right? So the zare is not always a long A sound. It has to have, and see, that wasn't in that course either, because they don't get into those those kind of things and something like that. But when you have the zare and then it, and then like if you had the zare and then it was followed by a uh, yud, uh, it would be a long a sound. So we have this class is known as, and you can tell people, I am now part of what? Beit Talmud. I have joined. Beit Talmud. I am part of the house of study. And we are also Beit Midrash, where we search <laughs> to find things. We're searching. We're searchers. Okay, isn't that cool? And because Talmudim would be studiers. Yeah. Well, Tom uh, Talmudim, Talmidah. 
Tamida is girls, girl students. Okay. Tamid, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Is boy students. Okay. And we're all part of this group. And uh, so if they want to know what you go to on Monday night, that's what you're going to. This isn't just a Hebrew class. Because we are we're 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 learning more than that. We're learning that too. But then we have the Sagal, which early on I heard people referring to it as now you have the olive, and under the olive is the puppy paw. And we laugh, but I've heard it. And then the Jew looks at you and goes, the poppy paw? What nikud is the poppy paw? <laughs> anyway, that's the Seagull. And that has the E-H sound, or the E like in bed, or let. And then we have the Shaba, Shaba, and which has no sound, or it has the E-H sound, like in let. Or it is a connect. Connecting things together to make one syllable. And, you know, and that's the thing. You need, when you're looking at words, you're always looking for the syllables. How many syllables does this word have in it? In it? And sometimes, like if you have an olive, and under the olive is a kamat. Okay, now that olive, and we got a kamat under there. Olive has no sound. You know how what the sound the olive makes? Oh. Uh -uh. No. Olive makes no noise. Ion makes no noise. Here's an ion. The only sound they make is the sound of the nikud. Gary, you're right on, man. Thank you for sharing that. He said that from back there. The, how many of you missed it? But, you know, he said it. I heard it. Okay. Well, that's correct. So then, if you have an olive, and under the olive is the kamatz, and then right beside that you have a mem, and then you have a shava under that. How do you pronounce that? That is only, that's a word with, that's only one syllable. The shava is a connector. It connects the, 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 the first part of that word and then that, and that next letter, they're, they're connected by the Shabba. And that Shabba has no sound of its own on, in that sense. But So Shabba is a really important Nikud. Very important to learn that. And so that's where you need to, to sit and study with other people and, and, you know, and go over these things and say, okay, how many syllables are here? You know, what am I seeing? And then we have the Chirik, which is the dot that's down below. The letter, and that's just an E sound. And then the kibbutz. Kibbutz, how many of you lived in the kibbutz? No, none of us. It's hot in the kibbutz. Some of them. I drove by one and it had a big tank gun sh sticking up out, remember that, Mark? Sticking up out of the ground. I said, wow, that's a neat thing to have in your front yard. It was a tank turret. Yeah. You know, with the big gun out there, all painted white so it blended into the sand. And then we have the sharuk, sharuk, which gives you the same sound. It's the oo sound, the oo, like in sukkot, suka, that kind of thing. And then down here we have the holam, which can either be a dot, just to suspend it above the letter, or it's like a bob with the dot above it. In that case, it's the bob does not have a sound. If you have a word and you've got a bob and then off to the side is the whole arm, then you have vo, vo. Yeah, and there are words in Isaiah 53 that have that. And so when you're looking at it and you go, Wow, look how Roger wrote the translation, you know, transliteration. Yeah, there's a reason because the dot is not a is not directly above the bob. It is a absolute bob, and off the side is the whole long. And it's both. 
Now, here we go. Everybody ready? Okay, here's the first one. How do you pronounce it? Bay. How do you pronounce these two? Ba. Ba. How do you pronounce these two? B. B. How do you pronounce these three? B. How do you pronounce this one? Bye. And it's important that you learn that because how else would you spell Shaddai? If you're looking at the word Shaddai and you're looking at uh, a, a Yud and a... Uh, and uh, or you're looking at a shin and a and a uh, yud and a dalit. How do you get um, shaddai? How do you get shaddai? Um, oh, you no, the the yuds at the the end. Excuse me. So, you, but you have to have that. You have to have the yud and the patak. And it's not a yud and a kamatz. It's a yud and a patak. And if you don't have that, you don't have the I sound. So in order to have that A, E, I, O, and U, and all the other sounds, you got to have that, and you have to know that that's what it is. And so a lot of times when somebody says, well, all I have here is the consonants, and you say, do you know what the word is? And they say, yeah, I know what the word is. Well, then think about it. How is it spelled? Does it have a long I sound in there? It's got to have a Yud and a Patak. It has to. There's no other way to get it. Now, what do we have here? How do we pronounce these two? Bo. 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 And how about these two? Boo. 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 Now, down here is the begged kepet. Now, begged is a Hebrew word. Begged means garment. Put on the garment of praise for the spirit. Okay, so... Begged is a Hebrew word, and it does mean garment. Kephet, not a Hebrew word. But together, begged, kephet, these letters, if they're at the beginning of a word, they have the dagesh in them, except in Scripture. How many of you have run across a pay, it should have been a pay. It was at the beginning of the word. According to Begged Kephet, it should have had the dog ash there. Should have been a pay, but it was fay. At the beginning of the word. How many of you have sung Mika Mocha? The way it ends is with the word that begins with a pay, but it's not a pay, it's a fay. Why? It's Biblical Hebrew. Mm -hmm. Now, when you see that, what do you think in your head? God is saying something. Am I hearing it? Mm -hmm. What is going on here? This breaks the rule. God can break the rules because he's the one that wrote the rules. Mm -hmm. But he's got a rule there and he's showing you something. How many of you know that those little bitty letters and those great big letters mean something? So, Roger, how do the Greeks translate that? They, they don't. don't do it. They don't. They don't. They don't. They don't. So now we're on this page of review. So what's he telling us? I will tell you later sometime by the <laughs> secret. You show me how to play that riff and I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Pro bono. <laughs> yeah, that was a bad, bad. I, I, I had to really apologize. I was doing um, John Fogarty riff, and the service had already started. How many of you were there that Saturday? And Rabbi came up to me and said, "You know, we're live." And I went, "Uh oh." <laughs> Uh-oh, <laughs> this is not good. <laughs> we are live. <laughs> and I just did a little lick from a song that, uh, well, I don't have a hound dog that runs through the... Anyway, so uh, here we are, and we have the Zeray. 
Now this is the rules of Zeray, because here the Zeray is followed by a Yud, the Zeray is followed by a Yud, the Zeray is followed by a Yud. All, all of these examples up here, we only have the Zeray. Now, how do you say yes in Hebrew? Ken. Ken. Not like Ken and Barbie. Ken. Not Cain. There's no Cain in Hebrew. <laughs> It might interest you to know that. <laughs> we don't have that word. So, yeah. But if you went with the way that some people teach Hebrew, they would say, Zeray is always a long A. And so you'd look at it and you'd go, Oh, Cain. That's how you say yes. No, it's not. How do you say yes? Ken. How do you say no? Lo. 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 Lo is no. It's not thou shalt not. That sounds really great, doesn't it? <laughs> I have the Moses thing. Okay. The first one here. How do we say name? Shem. 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 How do we say witness? Ed. 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 Edat. 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 Yeah. What is dot? Faith. Faithful. What is a congregation thing? It is witnesses who are what? Faithful. Faithful witnesses. Reverse it. Edat is that's two words put together to form the beginning of the name of our congregation. Isn't that cool? Don't you love it? And later on, I'll show you where I wrote it down. Okay. Anyway, how about son? Ben. 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 Not Bane. It's Ben. Okay. How about mother? Yeah. Just like in double. Okay, you and I think alike. Okay. <laughs> M, <laughs> mother. M. Uh, fire. Yes. Esh. Esh. How about God? L. 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 How about candle? Nair. Nair. Now, let's go down to where we have the A, the long A sound, because it's followed by a Yud. How about sons of? Bene. How about house of? Bene. How about blessed? Ash. Ashray. Ashray. And it's in a lot of the Psalms, the word Ashray. Okay. How about our God? Hainu. Hainu. And how about between? Between the altar? Between the door and the altar. And it's in scripture that way. Bain. So there is a difference, isn't there? But you're learning biblical Hebrew, so when you see that. Now we go to the ultimate letter. The letter that looks like a shofar. <laughs> At least the one my wife brings to surface most of the time. I love that one. It's really cool. It's loud, too. Um, anyway, when you have the resh, and uh, the resh has two sounds. Remember that the resh, uh, if it's got a uh, kamatz or a patak playing on the resh, it's an R, a heavy R sound. R. If it's an E-H sound like in let, then it's air. It's like air. So when we look at the word prince, how do you say S A R? Zar. Zar. Yeah. Long R, right? Hard R. R. Yeah, it's kind of an R. How about bless? Barku. See, we know that one, don't we? Barku and Adonai, Ambora. 
He's my echo. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> he is my shadow. Anyway, how about path? Derek. 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 Now, who is the path? Sure. What's another word for path? The way. The, way. the, way. the Derek. Derek. So when you meet a little boy and his name is Derek. Derek. Derek, what does his name mean? The way, the way or the path. That means, is that supposed to be Ed Derek? Ha. Huh? Ha. Ha Derek. Ha. Ha Derek. Yeah, the path. All right. <laughs> Woo! Thank you. It went right by me, Mark. You got me on that one. Oh. How about evening? Arab. Air. See? Air. 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 You hear the air? Air. 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 Air of Shabbat. Air of Shabbat. And so those are the rules with the, with the resh. Well, and then when you get over here to the Shabbat, Remember the, the important Shiva, which connects and does all kinds of things. How do you say you in the feminine? At. 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 Atah is in the what? Masculine. Masculine. How about this one up here? It's in the feminine. How do you say it? At. At. At is one syllable. At. And so the Shabba there doesn't have a sound, but what does it do? It connects these together and makes one syllable. It's got a Gaudesh in there, which, and it's not the first letter. What? The dog S on the Gaudesh. T. On the, on the top. Oh yeah, but you know what? That's because there sometimes is emphasis on the last part of the word. How many of you know that the emphasis is not always on the beginning of the word? Mm -hmm. Sometimes the emphasis is on the last part of the word. And you have to kind of watch that. Now this is not my idea to write it that way. That's the way it's written. The Dagesh is in there, why? because the emphasis on that is on the last part of the word. And it's a single syllable. So how do you say king? Melech. Yeah, Melech. But see, that Shabba is also what? Silent. That Shabba is silent. And uh, how about, so there's two syllables, right? Two syllables. How about blessed? Baruch. 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 And now the uh, Shabba at the end of that is silent, but it connects those two, so it's only two syllables. So that is this is a huge thing to learn, and you have to learn it. Because I'm going to tell you something, when you're studying Isaiah 53, you're going to run into this kind of thing, and there are words that you think only have two syllables, and they have three. And you got to really watch it. How is that Shabba being used? And this is where the discussions get interesting. How about path? Here we go again. Derek. Yeah, hi, Derek. <laughs> so we have Ha Derek, Veha Emet, Veha Chaim. Anoki, Anoki, Haderek, Veha Emet, Veha Chaim. Yeah, I just went horse from doing that. <laughs> okay, anyway, now we come to the coolest thing in the world. And this only applies to a few words. If you have a word and it ends in a het, and under the het is a patak. It's pronounced a certain way. So here we have the first one. Messiah is what? Mashiach. Mashiach. How about Noah? Noah. How about spirit? Noah. 
How about joyful? Sameach. And it sounds like an A, I know, I know. Yeah. But you know what? <laughs> the thing is, is that there are times when you're going to have that happen. And you're going to have it sound like something. Uh, and you're going, well, you know, we're, really that should have been more of an E-H sound. Uh, no, in, in this case, you're going you're gonna to say, Sameach. 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 Eh. But eh. But it, it, it sounds, it, it sounds when you're saying it, it sounds like you're saying a, a long A, but it's not. But joyful. Well, so now, if you see a word, and it ends in a het, and under the het is a patak, what sound is that? Mashiach. Ach. Ach. Now, what is the word ach? Sound like to you, George? Ah. Yeah, it sounds like ah, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's your mind. I don't know what those cartoons were saying, but there was a little imp on that plane, and I, I knew that shouldn't be there. I was only three, and I was watching that cartoon. How many of you remember early T? No, you don't. You're not my age. What are you talking about? When your dad had to go and make the target and fit that into the screen and everything had to be just perfect. And then it, the TV came on and you watched your shows and then, then midnight came and the lady came out and sang, God bless America. <laughs> Don't you love that woman? Don't you hate what they did to her? They got rid of that song. And they took and took her statue down. And they called her a bigot. And this is all on there. And I don't care. I loved her. I think she's a great singer. And I love the song, God Bless America. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't want this country destroyed. This sheet. Huh? I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray, bro. That's what I do. I pray. I don't know about the rest of you. I don't storm, the, I don't storm Washington, D.C. I'm, I'm a praying man. This sheet is probably the most important sheet other than all the rest of them that you have in your book. You know? Yeah, you're laughing, but you know, when you need it, it's going to be important. To you. Now, I, uh, I tell you, I really love this. Hallelujah. Oh, rules of the Shabbat. Now, how do I say tongue in Hebrew? Lashon. Lashon. Lashon HaKodesh. The Holy Tongue. Now I said tongue first, didn't I? And then I said the Holy. Tongue the Holy. Yeah. That's the way it's done. Yeah. HaKodesh. So, uh, but you have um, Lashon. Lashon. And then... Leklecha, leklecha, go forth, go forth, leklecha. But leklecha is the, one of the names of the per, uh, parasha, the parasha reading. It is at a certain time is is referred to by that by that phrase. Leklecha, go forth. Now, what what area would that be in? you were thinking in terms of the Torah. Genesis. That's right. Abraham, in Genesis. Abraham, go out. That's right. Abraham, he's going out, man. He's sending him out, isn't he? I want you to go forth. Go forth. Leave all these idols that your dad was making. Hallelujah. I want you to go forth. Stop worshiping the sun and the moon. You bet. That's what they were doing. So anyway... 
<laughs> Hallelujah. Now, so then, when you're looking at this, the first one, Lech, the Shabbat is silent. Why? Because it's a connector. All it's doing is connecting the Lamed and the E-H sound with this Cha. You know? It's a Chet Sofit. Not sore feet. Did anybody hear me say sore feet? No, it was Sofit. The final form. Right? Wow. The final form. The final frontier. Are all these pages on the Absolutely. Everything you could ever imagine is on your stick. Okay. People are going to be going, man, I should look at the stick. I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to go home. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's almost enough to make you want to go out and spend $100 and buy a little laptop. <laughs> Last laptop I got, what did I pay for it? <laughs> Nothing. I went up to them and I said, you know, a salesman had that for like this many years. That thing is ready. It's to be retired, isn't it? And they go, well, yeah, uh, the next salesperson that comes in is going to get a new one. I said, now, I'm correct me if I'm wrong, but you're going to throw that away, aren't you? You're going to discard it. And they said, well, yeah. <laughs> of course. And we're going to you know, get rid of all the data and everything on it. Everything. I mean, it's going to be blank. And we're going to get rid of everything. And I said, could you find it in your heart just to pass that over to me? <laughs> and they said, well, yeah, but it doesn't have anything on it. It's Don't totally blank. Put stuff on it. <laughs> I said, I can do that. <laughs> I can do that. How many of you know that I even found free software for a word processor? <laughs> the word processor that's on there was free download. Now they haven't upgraded it to since 2015, but it's it, buddy, it works. <laughs> it still works. 20, 2015, you know, that's a long time software. But you, you know what? That's the thing is that how many of you did that when you were younger and you would go to McDonald's or Burger King in, in the evening just before they shut down and you'd go, oh, you guys, did you make too many hamburgers today? <laughs> Are you getting ready to throw those in the dumpster? And they'd go, oh, yeah, kid. Uh, uh, could I have one of those? I'm really hungry. And they would give me their hamburger. Have two or three. You know, they wanted to give me all the French fries. I said, no, no, I know. Just, just a sack of them, you know. But, it, yeah, they throw this stuff away. They can't keep it. How many of you knew that? I wasn't telling you anything secret. And a lot of these companies do that stuff. Colleges do it. Uh, high schools do it. Everyone does it. Everybody does it, you know, and if you happen to be there at the right time, you know, and then sometimes I just have to tell them, put me on a list, <laughs> put me on a list, you know, but anyway, here we got um, the word for soul, neshama, neshama, how about Yerushalayim? <laughs> Hey, that one's Yerushalayim. Well, see, here's your I sound, isn't it? Yes. Here you have your Yud followed by the Patak, mm -hmm. and that's the long I sound. Yerushalayim. And then how about the word for virgin? Alma. So you have two syllables. Now, here's the, here's the funny thing. Somebody wanted to get into a debate with me, uh -oh. and they said, <laughs> what is the word for young girl in Hebrew? And I said, well, you're, you're going for Alma. And he said, yes. 
And that's the same word that you're using for virgin. And so it can mean a young girl. It doesn't necessarily mean virgin. I said, you know what? That would be good, except that's modern Hebrew. Biblical Hebrew, Miriam was a virgin of Israel and she was not a young girl. And anybody that would dare say otherwise is in trouble with God. <laughs> There's a difference, isn't there, between conversational modern Hebrew. It's pronounced the same. We do some, a lot of the same rules, all this stuff. But it's, you know, it's not. Biblical Hebrew is biblical Hebrew. Okay, so how about tears? Now remember in Psalm 56 and verse 8, it says that God counts the tears of women. <laughs> Psalms. <laughs> Psalm 56 and verse 8. That God counts the tears of women. Not the tears of Sam and I. <laughs> well, big girls. <laughs> I don't know. But I'm going to tell you something. It is really interesting because Dima is in the feminine. Dima is in the feminine. And so that's why it says that he counts the tears of women. And he records them. And so in the Talmud it says, you guys, watch how you treat women. Don't make them cry. You're going to have to give an account to God. The mouth can shut now. It's just... <laughs> it makes yeah. it's, it's, a, it's a warning. Huh? But how many of you guys have made a woman cry? Don't raise your hand. <laughs> this is on film. Okay. Now, how about judgment? Yeah. Mishpat. So it's two syllables, but you have a, a mem with a chirik underneath it, and then you have the shin with the shiva under it. That shiva is a connector. It connects the mem and the shin together to form one syllable. And uh, mishpat. In uh, the kosher pig, the book, the kosher pig, nobody's taken my book, the kosher pig. I love that book. Because it's an oxymoron. Mm -hmm. The kosher pig. That's what I thought about Jews for Jesus when I first heard about it. I know. It. Tell me about it, Sam. Look at that. I must admit, I read that book and I'm still confused. Well, it is, it's a little bit, um, yeah, it is. You don't read it in one day. You sit there and ponder like this. That's why I have a beard. I ponder. No. They don't have beards. They don't have time. They don't have time to ponder. How about the word and the king? Say it for me. And the king. Vehamelech. Vehamelech. How about the king? Hamelech. How about from the king? Now remember that from is the mem with the E-H sound under it. Mehamelech. Yeah. Mehamelech. Me Me well, it'd be like Mehamelech. 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 Like the le eh, eh, eh. So we got that. And then how about... Um, the uh, kings, plural, masculine. Malachim. 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 How about to a father? The Av. How about to the father? The Av. The Av. The Av. It has the ah, the patak and the patak. Now, see how important this sheet is? You can spend a huge amount of time just with this sheet. This is the next page that we're looking at. This is all review. 
all review, but I want you to go to this sheet. And this is very important because it shows you the value of having a particular book, Jesenius, 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 Jesenius in your library. Jesenius is an lexicon, Hebrew lexicon, Jesenius, and it gives you all of the root words. So when you go in and you look up a word, it tells you what the root words are in that Hebrew word that you're looking at, and it also tells you where that's found in the concordance. Concodancia. Remember the how you say concordance in Hebrew. Concodancia. Sounds the same, doesn't it? I mean, you know, basically. Okay. So anyway, at the top of the page, how do you say me in Hebrew? Li. Li. Well, that's to me. Ani, Lidodi, Lidodi, Li. Now, in modern Hebrew, the word Dodi can be uncle. That's another way. I use that when I'm arguing with people that want to tried to tell me what those words in the Hebrew meant. I go, well, you know, you come across the word Dodi, it doesn't mean beloved in modern Hebrew necessarily. It can be talking about your uncle. I love my uncle, but he's <laughs> not, that, not that way. Anyway, Lee is me. How about who? Me. Okay, so if I got Lee is me, me is then who? He. And then who? He. And he is? He. So those are all right up at the top here. Then you have father, mother, and child. Father, mother, and child. Sounds like a rock song. Of, am, yelling. Yelled. How many of you have heard a child yelled in the grocery store? Yelled. Big time yelled. And so, when you take the value of father, it is three. The value of the, the letters for mother is 41. And the value for the yelled is 44. So, father plus mother equals. Child. 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 Do you like that? Yeah. Okay. So the word Torah and more and Hore all have the same root word. Torah, instruction, and uh, uh, More is teacher. More. More. And Hore is parent. But the root of all three of those is exactly the same. Now, what book do you need to do that kind of a study? Jesenius. A Jesenius. Now, I buy the paperback Jesenius because. Cheaper. It's cheaper, and I can get it used on Amazon. So, and that's the Jewish way. And that's the Jewish way. Every one of you say amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. But is that a good thing or not? That there is a connection between Torah and More and Hore, and that connection is to shoot at a target or to hit the target. It's like being an archer. I need to hit the, the target. And so the Torah does that. The, the parent does that. The teacher does that. That is what we do, isn't it? And so we have that kind of study and these are the things that good messages are made of where we go down through and we show that there is a connection between the Torah and being a teacher and being a parent. 
Isn't that cool? Do you like that? Mm -hmm. So anyway, none of this is meat. But now we're going to have some filet mignon. <laughs> no, we're not. <laughs> but this is the sheet here. There's a whole bunch of these on your stick. Your SUB. <laughs> anyway, your little your little fat flash drive that, that you got and you loaded on your computer. It's a whole bunch of these in there because I, I like to tear words apart. How many of you like to tear words apart? I just love to. So here is Ruth chapter 1, verse 2. And we have uh, Elimelech. Elimelech. Now, El is what? God. And Lee is what? Mine. Or to me, or mine. And how about Melech? King. King. So what is the name Elimelech? God is my king. God is my king. How many of you knew how to tear word names apart? This is one of my fun things. I love it. I go in, I tear people's names. I, I go to grocery stores with my wife. I embarrass people. Um, you know, I see a name and it's a Hebrew name, and I got I just gotta share with them what it means. And you know, let's let's take this, let's go in and analyze this name. No, no, I don't. You know, I do it. I you do it too. I have been, I have done that to so many people, but it gets them interested sometimes. And then how about a dot at the bottom? Now we talked about this earlier, but a dot is made up of what two words? Witness. Ed. Faith. And dot. Faith and witness. And dot. And dot. And so, you know, it's nice to know that when you're telling people, because people will say to you, what in the world does the word adat mean? Well, it is two words. Ed. Now, where do we see Ed at in the Shema? At the beginning and at the end, there's two big letters. One is an I in at the beginning, and the one at the end is a rather large dalit. And so in the Shema, you have the word Ed because you're supposed to be a witness. And what is the Shema? The Shema is a witness. Pay attention, Israel. Pay attention. Hear, O Israel. Shema Israel. Adonai Eloheinu. Adonai Echad. Hear the Dalit at the end? That Dalit, not in the Christian Bible, but in the Tanakh, the ayin is huge and the Dalit is huge. Now, people say to me, people ask me, how come you need to have a nice Hebrew Tanakh? If you can't read it. Well, I say eventually you will be able to. If you stay in there. But one of the things you're going to learn, you're going to learn about all these wonderful things. I will, you know, to here's Gar Gary back there. He knows about the crippled Vav. The broken Vav in, in the Shalom. And what is wrong with that Shalom? How come there's a broken vav in that word shalom? Is there something broken about the shalom that it's talking about in that verse? Yeah, absolutely. And there's all kinds of things like that. And you know, sometimes you have a mem sofit and it's at the beginning of the word. Why would God put a mem sofit, a final mem form, at the beginning of the word. Pay attention. Pay attention. This is messianic. Mm -hmm. And I want to make sure you don't miss it. Mm -hmm. This is about my 
Messiah, that I send my son. And so I'm, I'm, this verse is written and it looks like a big boo-boo. It's not a boo-boo. Now I know we didn't make it there. But, you know, next week, no more review. Next week, we're going to learn that really wonderful song and then we're going to go right into Isaiah 53. I needed to do this because I've got some new people. How many of you will be patient with me? Uh, and uh, review is good. And so uh, next week we'll be back on that. But did you learn anything tonight? And that's important, right? It, and you can do the Vishamru. And that's really good. That's really good. Well, thank you, everybody, for turning out. Thank you, Roger. And, uh, you know, just be blessed. And you know what? Uh, when you take that, like that drive, and I think Chris wanted that so he can load that onto his computer. But then next week it's going to, you know. Now, uh, I can't remember who had the other one of my drives. But, no, you gave that back to me. You gave that. No, no, you didn't do that. Uh you have one, and so that I need that back.